Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So uh, we realized that we've done a lot of RPG adventure ideas and stuff, but we actually haven't really talked about what makes up a good session. Yeah. So we should probably talk about that sooner rather than later. Yeah, our channel has been focused primarily on uh, Game Mastering 201 and not Game Mastering 101, yeah. which is not a problem. It's actually good for people that are kind of seasoned GMs to get some ideas or tips that maybe they haven't thought of, or maybe they can just use one of our ideas and springboard it into something a lot better than we've done. But in this session, this is going to be primarily for the intro GM, and let's just define some quick terms. Um, so a game session versus a story arc versus a game campaign. Mm-hmm. So actually, let's go backwards because it seems easier to define it that way. A game campaign is the very long-term story you want to tell. For some people, it could be a couple of months to a couple of years, or that one guy that I saw in CNN. 30 years. 30 plus years. Because he's telling literally the history of the world. And they got to Sumer. Yay! Yeah. (laughs) Maybe they'll get to Greece before they all die. But the point is, the nice thing is he doesn't have to worry about source material. So... Um, it's already written, and he doesn't have to worry about getting there fast. So that said, you the game the game campaign is kind of your overarching major story arc that you want to tell in your story, and it pretty much takes your players from a very low level to a very high level, or if you're playing a different type of game that doesn't have levels, from really not a lot of experience to a ton of experience, mm-hmm. those sorts of things. And then the story arc would be kind of, I've talked about this a little bit in our act, scene, play model, which you can actually find out a lot more about that and get a kind of a free um, little mini course. I don't think it takes that long to go through. You can sign up for it in the link uh, below. It's in either the show notes if you're listening to the podcast or it's in the description text if you're watching this on YouTube. That said, uh, the story arc is kind of a kind of like an act in a play where the play itself would be like the campaign and the act has a beginning, a middle and an end and has a couple conflict points through it and it moves the story along. So if it's not the final act, it's kind of building up to the final act. And if it's, you know, the final act, it actually has the conclusion of the entire, not just itself, but also the entire campaign. Mm -hmm. Now a game session is the smallest part of this. This would be kind of a scene in a play Um, you know, so the curtains come up and you're in a location, three or four actors come out, they have a dialogue, the lights dim, and that is an act. I mean, sorry, that's a scene, because then the next scene would be another place or maybe different actors having a different conversation. And then the session is one type of, is basically whatever you're going to meet for. So if you guys meet for a couple days every now and then, that's your session. For us, we meet every other Friday for a couple hours, and that's our session. So you want your smallest building block to be done in whenever you guys, whatever time you guys have allotted pier whenever you guys meet. So for us, it's around three to four hours. So our mm-hmm. entire, typically they'll be three to four hours long. Now, it doesn't preclude it from maybe running into it the next time. So they might be as long as maybe six, seven yeah. hours. But for the most part, if they start going into the 12, 15 you're probably more looking at a story arc than you are looking at a scene. And you should probably break it up because your players will kind of... Well, look, our attention spans haven't gotten longer over time, okay? And so the nice thing with gaming is our attention spans do get longer by, you know, playing games like this. Mm -hmm. But the thing is to have a game session last seven years or two months or 15 game sessions, it really isn't, isn't good. You want to break it up into smaller chunks that tell the same story and get the same kind of oomph out of the whole thing. So let's just talk about what makes a good story, like a good game session. So a good game session has at least four parts. It can have a ton more. It can have maybe a little bit less or some variations on a theme. But very basically, in a lot of ways, you learn structure and then you do it so many times so that then you can break structure. Yes. But you're breaking structure on purpose, not because you don't know structure. Yeah, it's more of you're breaking it to throw a curveball for them than right. anything else. Right. So if you understand the rules of grammar and then you have a character who you know, you're know you using that doesn't understand the rules of grammar, you're breaking it on purpose because that mm-hmm. person, you're trying to show something about that person. So same thing here. The rules are really, there's just four of them. You need a hook. You need to provide some sort of options from the hook so you don't do a railroad. You need some sort of confrontation and some sort of conclusion. Yes. So hook, options, confrontation, conclusion. 
And, um, you know, if I tried a little bit harder, maybe I can make them all start with C or some weird an acronym, but I'm not going to. So you got the hook, the <laughs> options, the confrontation, and the conclusion. So let's just go through them. The hook is the tried and true, which you shouldn't use anymore, trope of your characters are sitting at a bar and a mysterious stranger walks up to them or is scowling at them from the corner. And if they manage not to kill said stranger, said stranger might have a quest for them. If they do manage to kill said stranger, said stranger has a note on them. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's not the best one to use, but you basically you need something to move your players from wherever they're at you need to go adventure. You need something to give them that piece of information they need to start. So you could have it as they're walking down the forest and they see a turned over cart that's been ransacked. So now the players are going to want to investigate that. That is a mini little adventure on itself, but then you could have that lead to your big one. Or yes. they witness a kidnapping, and they have to, and they're the only ones that could go to prevent that. There's other ways than just to try true person trying to sell you a map in, in a tavern. Exactly, exactly. And so that's the hook. The hook is basically designed to do one thing: move your players from where they are now to getting them into the adventure. Mm -hmm. Now, a horrible hook basically says something like, oh, um, the bandits stole the girl and they're in this cave. Here's a map. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe that's me. Maybe work with that a little bit because maybe there's like four entrances into the cave and they can do something with it. But you hear a scream for help in the forest. You, you can take that same thing of the bandits taking the girl in the cave, but instead of you telling them, think about it. What piece of information could you allude to that has them discover what you're trying to tell them? Because we're going back to what we've mentioned before of try to do more show, but not telling. Exactly. So telling them is, you know, the farmer comes to you and says, oh, they took my daughter and this is where she's at and that sort of thing. Sh uh, telling, uh, Showing them. Help, help. Somebody took my daughter. I don't know where they went. They were on this road. Right. Or even worse. Your players come across the uh, the top of a ridge just to see a girl, like an old man, get knocked down to the ground, mm -hmm. bludgeoned, and this girl get ride away, you know, scart carted away by a wizard who casts teleport, and he's gone. Yeah. Now you're like, oh, well, there's a hook for you. I just saw a kidnapping. You go and help the old man. You find out that there's some information, and the old man has a name but no location. Mm -hmm. And then your players have options because they have to figure out who is this guy, where does he live, what's going on, is is this guy even telling us the truth? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? And there's all these options. So options are the way to not to railroad your player, where they only yes. have one option, and they have no other way of going about it. And basically, it's... I don't know. Those aren't fun. If you want to... It, basically, it's like me reading you a story and you being forced to participate with options you have no choice about. So we want to avoid those. So options allow us to give our players the basically the illusion of choice... Mm -hmm. And why do I say the illusion? Well, because most GMs will have some plans in mind and some thoughts about it. Some don't, but most will. And so the illusion of choice is how many, you know, where are you, where are you trying to figure stuff out at? Where are you going to go first? What happens next? And if you do one thing, it may preclude you from being able to do the second thing because of time constraints. Yeah. But having the options allow players to feel like they actually have some free will in your game, and they should have free will in your game. And also having some choices that peter out because they chose this path helps with that. Absolutely. Because then it also gives the players an idea of, well, we had this event, but he also playing this whole entire arc that we'll never see. So it kind of gives them the sense of having to weigh their decisions heavily, knowing that they might not be able to go back. Exactly. Because think if you think about your characters in a living world that would exist without them no matter if they were there eventually the person in the cave is going to die right. whether or not the, the adventurers save them right or there may be some sort of bounty or there may be i mean there's other somebody's things going to fill happen. the bounty some there's time happening in the world it's just not this quest is not going to be touched until the players decide to touch it 
yeah. it resolves on its own without the player's intention, uh, without the player's. In that int. way, in that way, tabletop RPGs differ or can differ from video games. Where if mm-hmm. you get a side quest at the beginning of the game, somehow it's still available eighty five hours later in game time, which is really like that girl's still been trapped in the cave for the thirty eight years you've been playing the game in game time somehow. Yeah, not aging, not, not even affected that you just chose to neglect the quest since level one and you're level twenty now. Exactly. So anyway, so their options are good things. Moving on, and the rest of these two won't take that long. Mm-hmm. Um, the confrontation is simply that. Um, they need to have some sort of confrontation. The confrontation doesn't have to be a fight. Typically it is. It could be a mental challenge. It could be um, a puzzle of some sort. It could be almost anything you want. But for the most part, it's there's some little mini boss villain you have to go get somebody from or something out of, and then the players, because of how players are, choose to kill that person. But it could be something as simple as, you know, hey, the the wizard locked her in the tower, and there's a set of intricate magical traps and puzzles to get through, and once they get her out, she's out. The wizard's not even there anymore. Yeah. Now they've made an enemy of the wizard, but that's a conclusionary point. So you could have conflict without having to have a fight. But there's still some sort of conflict or challenge that the players have to overcome in order to resolve the hook. Mm -hmm. And then the conclusion is basically a statement that says kind of what happened now. Oh, you got the girl out, but now you've made an enemy of the wizard. Yes. Right? Um, And so, like, maybe as you're fleeing, the wizard teleports back in, starts accusing you of stuff, and you keep fleeing because you realize he's overly powered on purpose. And... The nice thing with this is if you're going to be taking this into a several campaign, you could take, in this example of the wizard, you could use how they acted during your session as consequences that they live with as because you decided to interfere, the wizard's now hunting you. Exactly. And that becomes this thing where a a, a conclusion doesn't necessarily have to bring closure. It could be a cliffhanger conclusion. It could be a mystery conclusion where... Mm -hmm. Things are open. It could be this vendetta conclusion where now you've created an enemy. It could also be a conclusion where it wraps some things up, but for every question you answer, you open up two more. Right. And then, of course, you would eventually want to, um, at the very beginning of your campaign, those kind of things where you answer a question and saw and find three more questions are really good at the beginning of your campaign. As you're closing your campaign out, I remember we're talking about the campaign, the very the act, like the yeah. play level, not the scene or the act level. As you start to close out your play, you want to start taking those threads that you opened and start to close them off. Mm-hmm. And it could they could be closed off because of actions of your players. Or they could be closed off because of the inactions of your players. Again, just because you decide not to do something doesn't mean things don't have consequences. Um, just because you decide to do things doesn't yep. mean things don't have consequences. And then because of the narrative, they're also closed because everything's clicking into place. Right. And there you go. So those are the four, just to conclude this entire thing, speaking of conclusions, you're going to have a hook, something to get them into the story. You're going to have options so they don't feel like they're being railroaded and they have free will. You're going to give them some sort of confrontation or challenge to overcome, maybe miniature versions of that, but there's always at least one big version of it. Mm -hmm. Out of that big one, you now have a conclusion or some sort of conclusion to get them away from this hook and into the next hook. And you may have open-ended questions out of it. You may, it may be fully closed if you want, like just, you know, a total side quest with no other real expectations. Or you could have a side quest that all of a sudden has major implications because of the things that the players did or did not do during that. But that's basically it. That's your GMing 101 for how to run a game session. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.